Hi, my name is Dave Treat. I lead Accenture's blockchain business, and I'm joined here by Dakota Gruner from ID2020. And we're sitting uh, in the uh, Accenture's new innovation center here in Ireland called The Doc, uh, which is our research incubation and innovation hub uh, for Accenture globally. Uh, we're very proud to be here. And we're here, why don't you explain why we're here? Sure, so we're here for a uh, hackathon hosted by Hyperledger and Accenture. Um, it's a blockchain for good hackathon, and it's bringing together uh, a broad community. I think we have 70 developers here um, working on blockchain applications for two different use cases, one around identity and one around supply chain. So we just finished the first round of presentations where the Hyperledger team did a great job to set up the, you know, set up the, the structure of the day and the different tools that'll be available from the Hyperledger uh, suite, uh, which is great. And then Dakota gave a great overview of ID2020 and we talked about supply chain. It, uh, I mean, it was amazing just walking over here. I, you know, people are already, they're breaking out the whiteboards, they're scribbling all over things. Teams seem to have coalesced out of absolutely nowhere. Um, so people are certainly moving quickly. Yeah. Which is great for us. I mean, so yeah. in, in, as we've gotten you know, ID2020, you know, formally we, we changed it, it's now an alliance, it's right? It's an alliance. Now it's an That's alliance. True. Um, the the open nature of it, right, is we're looking for we're looking for any and everyone to, to join in really with really with three things, right? It's you know, we, we need we need fantastic ideas and capabilities, money, yep. and we need the and we need the pilot projects to get things yeah. going. Yeah. Um, I mean, our, our sort of belief has always been that you know, digital identity is a topic and a problem that is you know, far larger than any single organization, institution, individual, anybody can solve by themselves. Um, you know, this started with, uh, with time spent at the UN and sort of to some extent breaking the, the notion that even the UN could solve it um, working by itself. Um, and, and so very much you know, our perspective has been we need to create the sort of the right ecosystem, the right melting pot that allows contributions from whether it's Accenture or you know one of the folks here today. Um, so really, really excited to see what everybody comes up with. Um, hopefully, we can kind of plug those in. We've got we've got pilot projects, you know, sort of in the earliest stages of design, and so it's you know it's not inconceivable to think that something comes out of the dock today that's actually you know piloted in the not too distant future. Yeah, and that, that's the fun fun part too about yeah. the grand prize. Right? So we're gonna take we're gonna take the uh, the winning the winning use case and uh, winning winning team yeah. uh, and bring them to our blockchain center of excellence uh, and uh, and help them to really incubate it and see what we can turn it into. Obviously, yeah. if it's one of we, we we're gonna give prizes for the supply chain best best supply chain yeah. best identity. Um, obviously, the best identity one is a fantastic input to ID twenty twenty. It's one of the interesting part of the conversations, um, obviously kicking this off, um, the, the focus is of course on blockchain. Um, interestingly, with all, with, all of these, with, with all of these blockchain projects, it's, it's about the combinations of technology yeah. usually, but the, um, you know, at the heart of it, you know, as you and I have talked through the struggles of, of why, why hasn't this, you know, why hasn't identity been solved or why hasn't supply chain been solved in the past? It really has come down to the, to the lack of trust um, to, you know, between entities to share data. And if they don't trust each other, then they have to constantly maintain their own data sets, message back and forth, or, or conceive of co consolidating data and, and having a single authority trust that. And that's just been too difficult. So, you know, what, what, you know, it's, what are you seeing from an yeah, excitement I mean, perspective? You know, I think that there's, there's been a long-standing challenge, this is what you're touching on, of saying you know, every organization has gotten the strong incentives for them to maintain their own data. Um, and I think for a long time that's been sort of the only architecture that made any sense. Um, and we've seen sort of how that model is falling apart, right? I mean, companies are paying exorbitant amounts of money to maintain their own data. They're carrying huge sort of cybersecurity risks because they've got this large collection of data. And then, you know, for the end user, whether that's me sitting in the U.S., me sort of wandering around Ireland or somebody in a developing country, um, you then lack the portability to sort of move between different organizations and to, you know, whether it's from a supply chain perspective and a, you know, a product moving between organizations or me as an individual moving between organizations, um, you know, you exist in sort of siloed manners um, in each of the different organizations you interact. Um, it just doesn't work. It's breaking down. Um, and so what's really exciting here is I think we're just seeing a seed change of um, belief that, you know, that there needs to be a new model of identity. There needs to be, uh, you know, a new way to think about how all these organizations relate to one another and, you know, a sort of federated model or something that would require each of the organizations to sort of come together in agreement 
may, may sound quite nice in theory, um, but you know, as Dave said, these organizations don't generally trust one another. Um, data sharing agreements get really complex if you negotiate them with every single organization you're touching. And so what you know, blockchain has the potential to do is to, you know, to facilita facilitate an entirely new mechanism for interoperability. This kind of event is fun for me, right? Because I, I it, the, when we asked, we asked the room, who, you know, who in the room understands blockchain? I think there was, every hand went up, right? So that, that's, so that's, so that's, so that's, a, that's a ton of fun because I'm, I'm, I'm often in the other kind of forum of, you know, we, you know, what is blockchain? Uh, so that, so that was great. Uh, you know, obviously the excitement here is as a, as a new type of database system, uh, we've now introduced this concept of, be, of, of enabling multiple parties being able to confidently share access to a single set of data, which just as you described, is, has been at the, at the root of why you know, so little has of, of what could be achieved has been um, historically. Uh, so, so that's quite exciting. Um, t talk about the, the, you know, through your experiences, you know, the, the evolution of kind of the four key requirements, the, the, the four P's is just so <laughs> critical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, the way I think about identity, you know, maybe it's easiest to do this is sort of drawing contrast to the way that identity works currently. Um, right now, if you've got your identity information, either it's paper-based um, or at least it's stored in databases maintained by lots of different organizations. And remember, you know, sometimes it's easy to say, oh, our government sort of knows who we are. Um, and oftentimes that's actually lots of different discrete government agencies, right? So the organization that knows and manages your DMV driver's license information is certainly not the organization that knows about marriage licenses, which is not the one that knows about birth registration, certainly not the one that knows about taxes. Um, and that's true, you know, in the U.S. and it's true in developing countries. Um, and that's sort of replicated across, you know, the, the landscape of international organizations um, and private sector. And... And so what that does for individuals is that, you know, you, you may think that there's sort of a consolidated view of who you are that makes it pretty fluid um, for you to access things. And for us, when we've had, you know, credible and issued paper-based documents, um, we're used to being able to wander around and, you know, prove who we are and be trusted, right? So I was able to get on the plane because somebody says, you know, a California driver's license or a U.S. passport looks pretty trustworthy and they're going to, you know, they're going to trust that and let you on the plane. Um, but for individuals in the developing world, and particularly for those who haven't, you know, haven't had any form of identification whatsoever, um, you know, th that's not an easy thing to prove. Um, and you know, it may be that a paper-based document could get you some of the way. Um, you know, certainly, it could provide access to various different things. But uh, you know, that it again, lost, destroyed. It could get lost. It can get destroyed. And so, what we think is really important. Um, and particularly as we think about people moving across borders, whether that's because they're you know, traveling or because they're forced to flee across the border as a refugee, um, is that people have identification that's portable, um, so it allows them to prove who they are you know, across various different institutions, that's persistent, so it lives with them from birth until death, um, that's personal, so it's, you know, it's linked uniquely to you, and people can say, I know that this digital person is a bio, you know, is a distinct biological person. Um, and lastly, that it's private. And that one is probably, you know, top of the list for me, um, ensuring that individuals have ownership and, over, and control over how that data is used. You know, this alliance approach we think is so important is being able to say we need all of those key stakeholders at the table. We need, you know, we need regulators who've seen it from a regulatory perspective. We need governments who are thinking about it from, you know, sort of a security perspective, um, you know, cross-border mobility. We need, you know, international organizations that maybe have spent a lot of time thinking about when things go really, really wrong. Um, and, and we need the companies who are, you know, bringing technology and, and resources. Accenture, at the heart of its mission, has you know the notion of helping improve the world and help the way the world works and uh, and lives, uh, as do many of our partner organizations. And so we have the philanthropic and the and the charitable humanitarian aspects of what we do. But of course, this works best when. It's We're also able to, there's a business case to it. Yeah. And, and um, you know, and, and that's, you know, in some circles, you know, I'm, you know, it's uncomfortable to talk about it in that way, but actually it's critical, yeah. right? If there's a, if there's an ability for there to be a commercial interest aligned with the humanitarian yeah. interest, which I think is what we're achieving, yeah. um, it's, it's going to make it move f faster, yeah. better, bigger. And the thing I'm really proud of in terms of what we've been working on so far is that the exact same solution that we're, you know, we're working to develop for the, you know, the refugees and the poorest of the poor and the most disenfranchised and the most vulnerable among us 
is the exact same platform that solves first world issues of AML KYC and you know and you know, identity theft and client onboarding and, and all of our, our very first world clients you know, uh, needs. And so we're going to be able to you know build off of the commercial possibilities and help you know help the world from a humanitarian perspective. And it couldn't be a better alignment. Well, and I think that that's a, I mean that's really natural given that you know, it's. It, individuals will move both sort of in and out of different states in their lives, right? And so, um, you know, it's very easy for all of us to sort of say, you know, we've we've been lucky enough to not be exposed to some of these risks ourselves, but frankly, like, we could be, right? You know, there's no reason to think that any of us couldn't be a refugee um, in the immediate future. And, you know, certainly the hope for those who are living as a refugee or who are you know, currently or without... Natural disaster. Maybe. Natural disaster. I mean, IDPs, any variety of this, or just somebody who doesn't have identification today, um, you know, the intent is very much for them, whether you know, it's a refugee or someone else, to seek resettlement, to be happily sort of established in the community that they're now living in, um, to be able to seek sort of gainful employment, et cetera. And so if there was this weird sort of abrupt stop of here's one solution that works for you when you're disadvantaged and here's one solution that works for you once you've entered sort of a, you know, a, a different state of, of life, like clearly that doesn't work. Um, that's not how, you know, that's not how any of us uh, you know, live, live our of our lives. Um, and so you, know, you think about this and you really want the refugee uh, in the camp, for example, to very easily be able to go and apply for that bank loan um, in, you know, in the community that's hosting the refugee camp. You want them to be able to apply for a job, et cetera, and then you know, build from that into um, the rest of their life. Some of the conversations I just had with some of the teams downstairs yeah. were, you know, is the, pra the practical side of it. Yeah. Like, you know, so you say it's coming, right? It's the, well, when? Right. And those ex and those appropriate expectations and, and what what it's going to take to actually implement these solutions. Right. I think the really clever thing around what we've been working on is it's a really, really small but small use of blockchain, but a critical one. And it's relying upon some other mature technologies and, and just that overarching philosophy of, you know, leave the data at its source, let the authorities that own it today do with, do with it what they do today. Right. And then we just need a basis by which to you know, use this technology to elegantly link it together and then introduce that control aspect for individuals yeah. um, as, as, you know, is that from a privacy perspective, yeah. as, as you said. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm really encouraged and hopeful not, because of conversations like we had downstairs where yeah. the, you know, where individuals and startups are really thinking creatively around, you know, there are ways to get this done in a practical manner yeah. um, with our work, right, of, yeah. you know, this is what we do, right? Lar large scale yeah. transformation and delivery. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it really. I'm quite optimistic that we're going to be able to get there, and yeah. um, and obviously that's news. You know, I'm, you know <laughs> good, I, good, good for all of us, right? Yeah. So. I mean, we've we've always set the timeline of saying you know the the sustainable development goals outline reaching 100 percent of the global population with identity um, by 2030, and that means that we have you know a billion, at least a billion people who currently don't have identification who we need to scale this up to. Um, by 2030. And so what we've set as sort of an interim milestone is saying by 2020, and that's why you know, we're named what we are, uh, it, having proof of concept, not just at sort of a true proof of concept scale, but at scale, at real scale. Um, being able to say that, you know, we've tested various different uh, entry points. We understand what it takes to deliver a digital identity to a child, um, maybe, you know, layered on top of receiving their vaccines. Um, and we've also, you know, sort of tested, okay, how would we reach an adult in a refugee camp? And how would we reach, you know, someone through, maybe it's their bank that they interact with or their, you know, mobile network operator. Um, testing all these various different things and then demonstrating the interoperability and the portability between those different sort of use cases. And so, you know, in our thinking, 2020 has always been this really, really important milestone. I think we're really enthusiastic that we actually are going to have pilots starting in 2018. Um, so, you know, results should be ready long before that. Um, but it's, uh, you know, we certainly, uh, you know, it, this is all early um, and it's, you know, we're, we're sort of in flight, um, really enthusiastic about sort of how quickly we can start bringing some of this stuff. Yeah, fruition. I'm sure we're going we're to get some great ideas yeah. out of the group today, both on identity and supply chain. Yeah. Um, we've 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 committed now that this is going to be a, a not this is not a one time event. Yeah. This is we're opening up an, an ongoing dialogue and and hopefully uh, you know yearly if not more frequent events uh, of yeah. the same. So 
uh, we're really, uh, I'm very excited to see what comes out of today and we're very proud to be part of this. Uh, and, and so it's uh, very proud to be part of ID2020 as well. well thank and, you guys for the support. You know, we, we're, we're looking forward to achieving, achieving the 2020 and the 2030 right. goals um, yeah. Yeah, as fast as possible. But essentially, we have, you know, we have a mechanism that allows anybody to participate. So there are working groups um, that, you know, somebody here at the dock, um, somebody working as part of the hackathon um, can, be, can be a member of. Um, we also have uh, technical and non-technical advisory groups and then, and then our board. Um, and so what we've tried to do is make sure that this is you know, truly open to anybody and that there's sort of a very clear process by which um, things that originate from this broad community can get built into the way that, the way that we work. There are lots of ways to get directly involved, and we yeah. want everybody's involvement. This couldn't be a, a more important issue to tackle. It's yeah. for the for the 1.1 billion people in this world who don't have any form of identity. They're excluded entirely from modern society, yeah. and you know, it just it, in this day and age, it's it's unacceptable. Yeah. So oh. we're going to solve it. We're going to solve it. I think we have a moral imperative to do so, and we really, really need help from everyone that you know is interested. So uh, obviously, great, great to talk with you. I'm excited to go back downstairs and uh, and see how things are going. Uh, on, thanks for joining and, and uh, listening into the you know into the two of us talking this through. Um, we're very excited to have you join with us uh, and uh, and welcome your participation on behalf of Hyperledger, on behalf of Accenture, ID2020, uh, and the Doc uh, here in Ireland. Uh, we're very excited to uh, to be focused on this and and to have you focused uh, on joining us in, in driving to a great end from a humanitarian perspective and uh, blockchain for good.